Hi there, everyone. Today, I'm delighted to be joined on one of our CCA chats with Rachel Lane, who is an expert on customer service and contact centre and working with Medallia. We're going to have a chat about the challenges, some of the solutions, and maybe a little bit about what the future holds for us as we move out of what's been a really, really disruptive two years into what's going to be, let's face it, a difficult and challenging period as we rebuild with, with all the knowledge that we've got, but also hopefully some, some new innovations which we perhaps hadn't even thought were possible. So welcome to Rachel, how are you? Thank you. And you know, I'm so happy to be here. It's great to speak to you again, Anne-Marie. Um, um, yeah, really looking forward to chatting. Yeah, great. Rachel, just tell us a wee bit about what you do and um, what you've been doing over the last two years. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm a solution principal for the contact centre at Medallia. Uh, for those that don't know Medallia, um, we're a customer and employee experience management company. So essentially we provide technology um, and that's often solutions to capture, analyze and uh, help businesses act on that, that intelligence that, that they're getting from customer feedback and customer engagement generally. So my role within Medallia is I'm kind of a conduit in many ways between the customer. So I work with customers on a daily basis. And sometimes I work with customers uh, within the contact center that have barely begun. Um, and, you know, they need quite a lot of guidance in, in terms of, you know, how, what type of technology do they need to engage with their customers? What kind of channels are they using? Um, what are the challenges that they're facing? That's the key thing that, that I tend to talk to customers about now. So I do a lot of um, being out and about within contact centers and um, ent global enterprises. And I work both in EMEA, but also in North America. So um, today I'm in London, um, but I also I live in San Francisco as well. So it, which gives me a really great overview of, you know, the global state of the contact center. So hopefully we'll, we'll get to, to share a little bit about that today. Um, other things that I do within Medallia, I work quite closely with the analysts as well. And what, what I'm trying to do as well is to make sure that our technology is, you know, future proofing as we move forward. So that yes, we can accommodate those challenges within the contact center today, but what about two years time? What about, you know, when we're not continuously talking about the pandemic and the effects of the pandemic and we're in business as usual and the growth and transformation that we're then looking to do? So it's a fairly holistic role within the business. So I, I work by influencing our product within Medallia as well. And also sometimes you might see me out and about, at, you know, your events. Anne Marie, um, and I do quite a lot of thought leadership and those types of things. So I'm fairly active as, as kind of a, a, the, the forward face of Medallia for the contact centre essentially as well. It's such an important point you make there about being out and about, seeing lots of organisations, because one of the challenges, I guess, is that companies have become just a little bit introspective. Everybody's become very operational and dealing with their own teams, which is great and getting everybody through this. So it's good to have your experience thinking of, you know, you've seen lots and lots of different companies, a bit like, like us at CC. It's a very privileged position to be looking at lots of organisations at one time. What do you think then, if you just had to, to single out challenge maybe one or two what, what are the main things that you feel are you know pretty much in, in most organizations that you're dealing with yeah I, I tell you I mean when we think about the traditional challenges of the contact center and for years we've been working with organizations and it, it's been about operational improvement um, and trying to do more with less um, but when we look at what's happened over the, the last 12 months and how that's so heavily influencing what's happening now and will happen for the next couple of years, um, I'm seeing um, probably slightly less about the operational improvement. I mean, it's still front and centre, don't get me wrong, but there's a real focus on frontline quality right now. Um, we're seeing, you know, a huge increase in attrition from those frontline employees. So it's really empowering those employees and understanding you know, what we can do to, if, if you're working within a hybrid or remote or everybody's coming back, 
how do you augment those teams back around the customer, perhaps in a way that was more flexible than it used to be? Um, how do you onboard new, new people into the business? Um, I was working uh, with a contact center the other day, really a large, um, a global insurer. Um, and, you know, they're looking at a, an upward trend of frontline attrition you know, they were 60% and now they're heading up towards 100%. Really, when we look at, you know, how long it takes to train uh, those frontline agents, we really now, the focus needs to be actually, how can we keep the ones that we have, really train, coach, empower um, new ones that come into the organization? Um, so it's a lot more about actually yeah, using that customer experience data that we're getting from customers to really understand not just how can we help the customers, but how can we help those frontline agents to yeah. better help those customers as well. So I'm seeing a huge focus on that um, right now, Amri. Um, and it's, you know, for many businesses, it's all consuming because, you know, we've seen over the last 12 months, the flip flop from you know, we're, we're going back into the contact center and then no, we're not, we're going home. And, you know, and so businesses have had a lot to contend with, but I do think, you know, it's made us all stronger. Um, and I think it's also empowered those frontline agents in many ways to rethink, you know, it could be that their work-life balance that they're rethinking, but often it's actually, you know, I've been at this contact center five years and I really want to make sure that I'm progressing and you know th there's an introspective going on with with those frontline agents as actually you know I want some real progression um, and that as well as contributing to this you know we're calling it the great resignation um, it's really just people reassessing what they want from their careers isn't it so yeah, yeah. absolutely I mean <clears throat> this, I think what we're probably calling this perfect storm isn't it you've got the great resignation you've got the piece where the, you've got people now really if they can afford to it and um, um, in, in sort of jo earlier jobs or younger jobs saying, well, I want more, I want more purpose out, out my job. You've also got a very different customer base, haven't we? Because I mean, our customer base is anxious. It's actually much more digital now as well because we've had to do test and trace and, you know, things for going on holiday and passports, and all sorts of stuff that people are now quite familiar with. So they're much more demanding. And the role, I think, of the front line, as you said, it's, it's really, really challenging. Um, and when you get good people, you really, really want to keep them. And that, I think this is, this is beginning to be this real penny dropping moment we've been talking about for years where, you know, all most of the routine stuff now is handled, um, you know, remotely and handled in a, in a good digital platform, but much of it doesn't work. You know, if you've old legacy systems and if you've got um, employees who maybe not as in, in don't have a view of the whole thing. So again, that's putting real pressures. How do you see the world of, you know, the, the, the sort of CX piece, the customer experience piece and the workforce piece? How do you see that being optimized by, by you know, perhaps a different approach? How, how would you see that working? Yeah, well, I think, you know, in terms of what we're seeing out there today is, you know, for years as contact centers, you know, we've, we've naturally been investing in relatively large scale platforms. Um, and some of those are quite complex to operate and some of them require, you know, a good resource and the back end of that to pull out the analytics in order to, to drive the business. But I think what we're seeing now is a real need for simplicity and agile data with certainly from a technology perspective. So, you know, and I think we're seeing that and, and the technology vendors are really starting to step up without a shadow of a doubt. But I think there is a general move as we see a move away from on-premise solutions into SaaS. Um, we're also seeing a move from um, these large platforms into, you know, almost uh, best in class point solutions, which is great because then you are you're getting something that is, you know, if it's a SaaS, it's going to be updated with very little effort on the back end to to make any changes for the business. Um, but also the the number one key thing I'd say is that the agility of that data. So for years, contact centers have been quite siloed in terms of their customer data. They don't get to see 
often what's happened in store in branch they don't get to see those customer experience often that were digital um, and what we're seeing now over the last particularly the last 12 months is you know we might not be de-siloing those businesses but we're de-siloing that data and so as these businesses are replacing their big systems with um, albeit simpler systems for an organization to to run um, having that data being able to integrate and trigger um, a seamless experience from the customer perspective, but also from the, the contact center as well is proving to be really invaluable. So that ultimately um, you're seeing faster return on investment from those, those technologies because they don't take a long time to, to stand up like, like they used to do. And they don't need such um, a large amount of skilled analytical manpower on the back end because all the power is in those, those frontline dashboards. So we're seeing you know, a real need for best in class, but simpler solutions and buying what you need instead of buying the whole platform. And you, know, you might have the luxury of only unlocking one or two pieces, but still you know, that data is often encrypted and locked within, within that platform. And I think what we've seen over the last couple of years is a real need to free that data and be able to use it right across the business. So, yeah, that de-siloing of, of data, Anne-Marie, is, is yeah. really one de-siloing, of De-siloing, simplification. But again, it's, it's back to this thing. And, and things are better now, aren't they? I mean, you know, when yeah. you think back to the, the, the response that we had after the 2008 crash, it was a lot of digital, a lot of more for less. Mm. Um, we've still got the more for less agenda. I think it's probably hardwired in. But yeah. digital works better now, but you need to, but again, you need you need a, this common understanding and we need very fast routes of information back from the front line, particularly as bonds are broken, where people are working in different solutions and hybrid and whatever, we don't quite have that same, um, set, we don't have this, the benefits of centralization, lots of disadvantages of centralization, but there are also some benefits. So I guess the technology is giving the ben, putting the benefits of centralization back in without the need for physical presence, which hopefully is... Yeah. Uh, Hopefully that is a good piece. So finally, Rachel, what would you, I mean, you've got a wealth of experience and we could, we could chat all day. If you had to give just a bit of quick advice to those who are perhaps a bit struggling and let's say the last two years have been a lot about just facing, facing into the problem and not quite seeing the solution yet. What would you say, what, what, what advice would you give to those organisations? Yeah, and you're right. You know, we still see a lot of organisations that have have just been coping over the last couple of years and they've done a great job of coping but a lot of those transformation programs um, were almost put on hold to get into the actual let's service the business right now as best we can let's make sure that we're understanding when we get customers at risk coming in the business and so they've had to augment around the today um, but i think um, one of the key things, and again, we're going back to this, this simplicity piece as we go forward. If you're not seeing um, a great improvement in terms of, you know, you could be looking at net promoter scores as an example, whatever metrics it is that you track. If you're not seeing a great deal of improvement, often it's, yeah, let's look inwards. So if you're doing things like post-engagement surveys, have a look at the type of surveys that you're doing and, and how you're doing them. In the first instance, you might not need to spend any money on new tech. It might just be, let's have a look at, you know, realigning the data. Are you now asking the right questions for customers? How is that data when it comes in? How is that being escalated around the business? And what's the governance process? That's a, that's the number one place that I would start with you, Amory. And then from there, look at the technologies, look at where technology has moved in terms of channels of engagement. So for example, when we used to think of contact, the number one thing that we would think with contact centers, when back in the days when they were just call centers were, it's a phone call into the contact center and that's your method of engagement. That's no longer the case. Now the contact centers are most often managing live chat. So they've got agents that are able to answer the phone, but equally they might be multi-skilled and they might be doing running live chat sessions. They might have six, even eight live chat simultaneous sessions. So they're very skilled people in more than one channel. You might be handling your social media as well. 
from uh, the contact center. You might also, and I'm seeing a huge increase in this right now, is instead of focusing just on that call that's coming into the contact center, what about we go the stage before because we know how critical that digital experience is and the self-service piece. So what a lot of contact centers are doing is they're bringing in that digital experience data into the contact center so that they can actually look at you know, why couldn't the customer self-serve in the first place? Yeah. So, you know, we've all been talking about deflection for a long time, but actually now the focus with a lot of contact centers is understanding great containment. You can't contain all calls dig uh, on the digital platform, but knowing which engagements are going to come into the contact center helps you really make sure that the workforce you've got on the front end um, are skilled up for, for the mo more complex calls that we've, we've been talking about yeah. for a while. And, and, they, and they can add value rather than just yeah. simply saying, oh, that's a shame, that's on our other, that's our other team. <laughs> you know, that, that's all part of it, isn't it? It's about solving yeah. problems at the end of the day. Rachel, yeah. I guess we could talk all day and I'm sure we'll talk again. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to, I'd like to um, say a huge thank you just now and uh, this session, as you know, has been recorded. It's one of many recordings that we'll have through the CC library for information to uh, anybody who's interested in these really important topics, because we've had so much sharing, so much experience, um, been, been really well shared actually, and been and it's been a really generous, I would call it a really generous act by so many people to share so much of their experiences uh, during what's difficult times and will continue to be difficult times. But if we try and share what's good, then hopefully we can all help get, get a little bit better on behalf of customers and those workforces who are been working so hard over the last couple of years. So I'd like to say thank you, Rachel. Thanks so much. And we'll speak again soon.